was going through a really uh, hard time in my life, a difficult period, uh, and art making was a way to um, to save myself, to heal, and to exercise all of the problems and issues that were um, causing me to suffer. I believe that anybody can become an extremely talented and masterful artist, but not everybody is born with the passion and the commitment to put in the kind of time that that demands. For me, uh, what drew me to art and where my passion came from was that it's always been very healing. And so it was a cathartic uh, process for me, which kept me doing it. I consider myself Chinese American, but ethnically I am Dai, Ami, Tibetan, and Vietnamese. In particular, being indigenous Chinese has been especially important to me lately. There's an element of divination in all of this, of, of attempting to understand the divine. Divination appears in most cultures that have ever existed, and it can be explained as humanity's attempt to either see into the future or find answers through the divine, through various methods. The one particular Chinese method of divination uh, was the use of oracle bones. My ancestors actually, they would throw turtle shells into fire and they would read and interpret the cracks that would appear in order to find answers. My middle name, Pu, uh, it means divination in Chinese. It comes from my mother's side of the family. It's actually my mother's middle name because my ancestors on her side of the family were oracles. They tried to tell the future um, by using bones and other means. And in a strange way, I kind of feel like what I do with my paintings is similar. It's helped me understand what my own indigenous Chinese heritage means to me. It's been surprising to me the parallels between uh, my, own, my own heritage and some of the cultural traditions of Alaska Native groups here. Uh, the Athabascans actually uh, have a practice of using divination bones as well. They would throw bones into the fire to predict where hunters should look for game find more and more there are these similarities between uh, the research that I do into my ancestry and a lot of the traditions up here um, and it's always really exciting whenever there are those moments of connection in that way. There's a motif that I've included which is tan salmon skin uh, from a salmon that I caught with my father and I learned how to tan salmon skin at the Alaska Native Heritage Center at a workshop that they were offering with Athabascan artist Joel Isaac. It's thin, mm -hmm. it's not quite as thin as this one, but um, it just depends on like how much you manipulate it. And Joel Isaac was telling me that Alaska is actually one of the most recent places to receive salmon runs and that countries like China and Japan and New Zealand, they all had a salmon culture and salmon skin tanning as well. To me, whenever I'm including multicultural motifs, it's always a celebration of those cultures and with what we share in common as humans. The title of the piece is The Skin Remembers because when you're tanning animal skin, um, if you, whatever shape you leave the skin as you're tanning it, it will always remember that shape. And so if you leave your skin crumpled up, it will dry crumpled up and you will never be able to straighten it out unless you completely re-soak and redo the skin. The salmon skin stands in for just honoring the experiences we have as these sensitive creatures that everything that happens to us leaves a mark. This little stone is pure yellow ochre pigment that the Nubiak elder uh, dug out of a riverbank and gave to me. And so I work this actually into my pigments. There's actually some of this inside her for flesh tone.
My parents took me to some of the greatest art museums in the world on a regular basis, and um, there was a, a realness to the figures in those paintings that seemed possibly even more real to a real live human being. And I think that's because in a painting of a person, you have a psychological complexity that you can embed through body language, through how it's painted. The way that I paint, it's, it's meditative, uh, and the paintings that I grew up with, they always seemed meditative to me. They function as mirrors, I think, for people. And they functioned as mirrors for myself. I really had felt like by the time I got here that I thought I knew what to expect from everything. That everywhere I ever lived was always unpredictable after a certain amount of time, but in Alaska, it is constantly surprising me. And I think it will always surprise me, and it's my favorite thing about this place.